Warning, The Evil Within does not mess around and shows incredibly explicit gore. If you're uncomfortable with this, then please turn this review off now. Are they gone? <laughs> Pussies. Okay, let's make this quick. The Evil Within is a game that had a lot of potential, but unfortunately stumbles in its execution. No pun intended. It's a third-person survival horror game directed by Shinji Mikami, creator of the Resident Evil series. And he wants to make sure that you know that because a lot of levels feel like throwbacks to Resident Evil games. Shit, back here again. You're put in the role of Sebastian Castellanos, a police detective who's sent to investigate a crime towards the end of his workday, but unfortunately the normal investigation procedure doesn't quite go by the books as he and his partners are dragged into what seems like a Hell on Earth scenario. The story is all over the place, and by the end we'll probably leave you with more questions than answers as certain plot lines are just dropped to probably be explained later in a sequel or DLC. Part of the problem with the story is that the characters the game focuses on are pretty boring, as none of them really give off any sort of personality. Even the main character, Sebastian, is about as interesting as a cardboard box, and delivers his performance with all the passion of a post-pubescent middle schooler in a class play. No! Stop! Oh my god! Oh shit. The game tries its best to have a distinct style. It gives off a grainy film effect in order to try and have a more cinematic feel, but in the end ends up being more annoying than cool because it gets in the way of the action. Luckily though, you're able to turn it off if you choose. However, what you can't turn off is the letterbox format, as the game demands you play through it with about a third of your screen missing. Again, they try and do this in order to make the game feel more like a movie, but it can get in the way of gameplay. During the action segments, you'll forget that it's there, but during the sneaking segments, it will frustrate the hell out of you. Not being able to see when an enemy is coming around a corner because of these black bars you can't get rid of will be enough to drive you up a goddamn wall. Speaking of which, it needs to be mentioned that this game is hard and makes no bones about it. You're gonna die. A lot. It even says so in the manual. And yes, there's a manual. And that's awesome. While there's nothing wrong with making a game hard, the problem the Evil Within has is that it feels hard for all the wrong reasons. In a game like Super Meat Boy, when you die, you have nobody to blame but yourself because the controls are so fluid. But with the Evil Within, the controls are so clunky that just about every time you die, it almost feels as though it was completely out of your hands. Shit. Ammo is scarce, so you're going to want to make sure that you can serve and sneak around as much as possible. However, as you go through the story, the game refuses to follow its own rules. There are segments where you think you can sneak around and take out enemies the same way they let you earlier in the game, but actually doesn't let you do that and forces you to use up precious ammunition that you were saving for bigger fights. The game just expects you to know what it wants you to do and where, even though they never make it clear, which can lead to some really unnecessary deaths. While I'm sure most of these decisions were made in order to make the game seem scarier, it's not really so much frightening as it is frustrating. It's a fucking nightmare. I can see what they were trying to go for, because you never know how difficult an enemy is going to be and can never be too sure as to whether or not you can take him out with what you have. This adds to the tension and forces you to make every bullet count, much like how a survival horror game should play out. However, while it's tense the first time around, after about the sixth or seventh unfair death you experience, you stop focusing on how much the game is trying to scare you and start focusing on how much the game is trying to cheat you. Well, I didn't say it was perfect. And this is a real shame, because there are some genuinely creepy moments the game offers, as well as a superb atmosphere. Mikami knows how to build interesting and creepy worlds, and this game is no exception. Where the Evil Within truly shines is during its boss fights, as they're some of the most creepy, satisfying boss fights I've played in a while. The clunky controls combined with the lack of ammo in the boss fights actually helps the experience, because in these situations, you only have to focus on one enemy, so if you die, you really have nobody to blame but yourself. They feel absolutely terrifying without making the player feel the need to tear their hair out. Another thing the game nails is its art direction. Despite the game's graphical limitations, every level is beautifully animated, as it truly feels like you're going into the world of a madman. This place is filthy. What's bizarre is that even though the game isn't graphically impressive, there are still problems with texture pop-ups as the game seems to have a hard time running, even on the PS4. During my playthrough, it was plagued with glitches. I had to reinstall the game once, the game crashed on me twice, and a glitchy environment object blocked my path, preventing me from progressing any further in the level and making me reload the chapter. I really wanted to like The Evil Within, but strange design choices coupled with subpar graphics, massive glitches, a poor story, and frustrating gameplay that feels out of your hands really hold it back. Somewhere deep in here is a great survival horror game, but unless you're a big fan of the genre and already played Alien Isolation, I can't in good conscience recommend it. Overall, I give The Evil Within 34 quesadillas out of 99 SD cards. Shit. Hey guys, thanks for watching our review. If you liked it, then feel free to subscribe. Weekly videos are coming soon. Also, make sure to let us know what game you want us to review next in the comments below. Thanks.